The day has finally come. I'm so excited. Ever since we started this ministry, I've been pumped about interviewing my father-in-law, and today is that day. I know he's going to want a coffee, so I'm going to make sure and come prepared. That way we start this thing off right. Some of you guys might already know my father-in-law. He's Pastor Patrick. He's a missionary. Uh, but if not, you're going to get to know him really well today. Something about him and I that we've bonded on is coffee. And so I know if I'm asking him to interview, I should definitely bring a little thermos of coffee. All right, let's go find him. This is where I think he'd be, right inside this shop. Hey, Dad, you in here? Just where I thought he would be, out in the shop. That's where a retired man should be. That's right. So That's thank right. you so much for coming on here today. Well, you're welcome, son. And <laughs> Hi to all the Praying with Charles fans. I need to say hi to your groupie. Hey, 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 hey. My mom's out there. Hey, my mom. <laughs> if you're just joining us, we're a prayer ministry that takes you with us as we travel to the ends of the earth to witness the power of prayer firsthand. During this pandemic, we're not traveling much, and so luckily we're spending some quarantine time with the in-laws, and it's a perfect opportunity to get the interview that I've been wanting for a really long time. Okay, so we're senior citizens, and I got my kids taking care of us. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> so tell them a little bit about your life and your ministry. And Okay, first life. What's important to me? Relationship with the Lord, relationship with my wife, relationship with my family. That's that's life. That's what's important to me. Mm -hmm. Get those things right, and I'm right. Yeah. You asked about ministry. Uh, started out as a youth pastor in 1971 as a minister of youth in Miami, mm -hmm. Florida. Ah. Went to California, San Luis. No, what is it? San Joaquin. San Joaquin, a town in California. And we pastored a church for a couple of years. Then we were missionaries in Chile for 23 years. Then we mm. pastored here in Alamosa for 23 years. Amen. And now my life is full of joy and yeah. fulfillment as praise a retired God. dude. I, praise God. I do, <laughs> this stuff. I do <laughs> stuff with my hands now. Yay. And so early on, we bonded over tools and yeah. repairing stuff. And yeah. I, when I started thinking about where we're going to interview, I thought this was the perfect environment. And so one Indeed. of the things we're trying to figure out at Praying with Charles is how people pray. And we want to give you tips and tools so that you can pray more effectively, uh, whatever that looks like. And so we're trying to figure that out. We're on a journey. And so we're always asking people, how do you pray? And I have the insight into your prayer life and just know that I want to get that out to more people. Uh, so if you would please just give these guys some, some of your insights on prayer. Okay, spending time with the Lord is the high point of my day. I, I, I can't live without bathing my heart in His presence and having Him change me and mold me, turn transforming into the image of his son that's that's the primary thing in my life mm. that I, I look forward to spending time with the lord every day and uh, i absolutely love it mm. i i tell you what can't can't live without it that's so cool though to think that you're in retirement after a lifetime of ministry and you're talking about growing in your walk with the lord i think that you know coming from a young buck and some of you guys out there watching, it's like, it's a process and God's gonna keep humbling you every step of the way, every day of your life. We were in ministry for 45, 47 years, full-time ministry. And a lot of my prayer time during that season of my life had to do with, Lord, what are you saying through me to people that will help them? And a year and a half ago, since we retired, uh, it's, what's he doing with me? How's he improving my life? Mm. How's he making me a better person? I've, I've encountered a new depth in my relationship with the Lord. Yeah. 
surprised me. A new yeah. depth, a new joy, a new intimacy yeah. since, uh, since I've got the time now. I love it. Yeah. Hey, if you guys are liking this so far, would you smash the like button for me? And why don't you put down in the comments, if you know Patrick, maybe how he's impacted your life or just how you guys met, maybe if he's baptized you in a river somewhere, let us know in the comments down below. Only if you like me. If you don't <laughs> like me, forget it. Oh, Ignore that. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the things I know you came prepared for today was a story of when you prayed, how did, how did God respond? Because we hear scriptures like, if my people will humble themselves and pray, uh, I will heal their land. And so we know that there's a relationship between God and people, and He wants communication. So what are some times that you communicated with Him, and how did He respond? You asked, you prepped me for that question. Uh -huh. And uh, I got to praying about it. And <laughs> for me, the most significant, life-changing uh, moment was when I was a young buck, I was 21, and I was at Vanguard University, and then I had to figure out what am I gonna do when I grow up. So I was uh, praying about it, and I was feeling becoming a teacher, <clears throat> a professor, uh, becoming a psychologist, becoming a businessman, or going into ministry. And so I, I went to visit my folks who were missionaries in Colombia, and it was a time to figure out my life. And when I got there, my dad says, I got you lined up for a series of services in a place called Sogamoso. It's for a week and you're going to be an evangelist. And okay. I'm going, oh, good grief. What? I yeah. didn't ask for that. So, yeah. But he, I communicated with the pastor and he had, pamphlet, he had put pamphlets all over the city. Okay. Uh, saying that here comes an evangelist and he will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I'm going, good grief, false advertisement. You know, I, I'm working through theology and trying to figure out my faith in my life. And, I love it. And I'm going, ah! So I have to go. I went. And uh, the first, I, since I grew up in Chile, I knew Spanish. I preached in Spanish. And... Um, I asked for an altar call for people to come forward and get saved, and then I dismissed the, the service, and the pastor stopped me, and he said, no, now we're going to pray for the sick. He's going to lay hands on the sick, and they're okay. going to recover. And I'm going, oh, good grief, false Edwards. I'm going to go to jail for this. <laughs> so he called everybody up that needed prayer, and there was a line of people, and I'm looking down that line. I'm going, good grief. So I... I go to the first person, I ask, what do you need to pray for? Well, I got a little sore back. I'm going, okay, that's okay, sore back. No one's uh -huh. going to tell that didn't get healed, you know, and the other person going on about, you know, a toe yeah. ache or something. I look down, and there's a guy about three pe people down who has a shrunk uh, right arm. I mean, it's half the size of his normal arm, other arm, and it's sitting like this. Uh. And I'm going, Oh, that's my test. So yeah. uh, I make the prayers longer so that I, I you know, don't have to get to him exactly. right away. Exactly. And uh, then I'm standing in front of him, and I say, what do you need prayer for? He says, my arm. <laughs> yeah. So I go into prayer. I switch to English because I had to say a prayer that I really meant, and they, they don't understand English. Uh -huh. So my prayer went something like this. My God, what am I doing? What did you get me into here? I don't even believe this stuff, and I know it's by faith, and I have no... What and I, my eyes were in a slit, so I, could, I had my eye on his arm in panic. Mm -hmm pretending like I, my eyes were closed like I was praying, uh -huh. but I could actually see his arm. And his arm started to puff out, started oh. to inflate. You know, you hear things like that. Yeah. But I saw it. Praise God. Uh, two feet in front of me. I mean, just sitting there. It's incredible. My eyes pop open, and it, he just, it just became normal like his other arm. He started to go like this. And I'm... I'm just blown away. Yeah, I'm no going, sure. ha! 
so it, you know everybody in the community knew him he had a shrunk arm so I, everybody's all excited uh -huh. and after the service they came to me and says there's a lady who has tuberculosis and we want you to pray for her okay. go to her house i'm going okay now i'm kind of excited <laughs> <laughs> so i go to her house and here's this lady laying on the bed has a rag bloody rag in her hand just just coughing just coughing up blood mm. and uh and so I pray, and nothing happens. Then I switch to English because that worked before. Nothing <laughs> happened. She just got worse. She just gagged. I finally Jeez. just left and gone. I don't know what this does to my future in ministry and what uh -huh. have you, but this is terrible. Yeah, yeah. So next day I finished the service, and they they call a lady forward. And I didn't recognize her. It was that lady. She, She'd gotten well that night, uh, had gone to the hospital. They took an x-ray of her lungs. <laughs> Tuberculosis is a lung disease. Yeah. And she put up that thing. Her lungs were completely restored. My goodness. Great. I'm gone. Okay. So that, that changed my life. I... It wasn't a thing of huge faith. It was uh -huh. like, oh, God, what are you doing with me? Yeah. And um, then I went into ministry. Amen. Well, then I did do psychology, <laughs> and I did do teaching. I was a professor, and now I'm doing business. So all the mm -hmm. four things that there I had in my heart happened. But yeah. uh, that was a turning point in my yeah. life. That's a story of biblical proportions there. I love it. That's so encouraging. And I hadn't heard that before, so I'm super stoked about that. <laughs> So right now, as we said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And so I want to take a few minutes and just pray. But I want to encourage you guys to hang out with us to the end because I've already prepped him to come with some encouraging advice for you guys. And over the years that I've been married to his daughter, uh, I have just grown and grown and grown spiritually because of the words from Patrick. And I know that people I interact with in the community tell me the same thing. So stick with us to the end, but I want to cover this pandemic just a little bit in prayer. So I'll take it away. And if you just close for us, that would be great. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you that you're in control. Father, we know that you want to hear the cry of your people's hearts. Right now, Lord, we petition you on behalf of a state, a nation, and even the world, Lord. We know that everyone's in this together, and we ask that you fight our battles for us, Lord. When you launched your people into the desert from Egypt, you made, you said these words, none of these diseases. And I pray that none of these diseases affect us. Uh, that goes for our families and that goes for every listener. That this coronavirus, none of these diseases will touch us. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Lord. Such a good God. We serve such a good God. Yeah, He's ready. Did. He's on the throne. He hasn't left. He hasn't abandoned us. He's ready to move in our lives and in your life. If you just ask Him today, it's as simple as that. We know that those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so as we work towards closing, uh, I'm really interested in what you brought for us today. And whether it's on prayer or whatever topic, I encourage you guys just to lean in a bit because... Uh, what Patrick brought for you guys. I'm setting you up like the like the missionary did. It's going to change your life. So. <laughs> oh, no, no, I but now switch. this is on the back side. I'm going to switch to Spanish. <laughs> 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 for me, uh, prayer is getting to know the heart of the Lord. It's uh, knowing what he wants, knowing his kingdom purpose and how he wants to include me in that. And the, the, I just gave you that story about faith. That's just the sovereignty of God. There's no faith in that one. It was just, mm. my God. Mm. But I, wh what I'm finding in my prayer life is that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word and what he says his promises and his nature who he is mm -hmm. 
bathing my heart every day in that. Uh, there, it's called Rema. You, you, it comes alive, and then you hear it in your spirit, man. And it, it. Uh, we all have a lot of weirdness. Some of us more than others. <laughs> <laughs> but, spend, but, but spending that kind of time is a great weirdness. Reduce her. Yeah. I mean, he just wants, he wants to make us like his son. And believing what he says, whatever it is, finances, uh, marriage, relationships, health, purpose, meaning in life, who am I? Whatever, whatever the stuff is, getting into that place with the Lord and bathing that in in his presence just produces life and it produces faith because you're hearing the promise in your inner man and it 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 has transformed me i can't live without spending time with the lord it's i don't do it i don't do it out of um obligation or feeling guilty because I know I should and I didn't don't do enough of it. Uh, I don't even keep track of the time I spend anymore. It's just because I want to spend time with him, and I love doing it, and that changed my life. And I I encourage you with it. So that was one thing I wanted to say. I also want to say another thing. Uh, how long have you guys been married? Eleven years. So I've known them. I've known him for twelve years. I want to encourage you to lean in to Chuck's and Jolene's ministry. This, what God has put on their heart, ha He's also put an anointing. I know what an Amen. anointing looks like, and this thing is a quality ministry that God is developing. So I encourage you to. Press into this ministry, pray for this ministry, uh -huh. support this ministry, share, uh, uh, click, uh, yep. donate, yep. click. Uh, <laughs> Those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Get, get behind this thing. It's a God thing. Yeah, God's taken us uh, crazy places. Of course, right now we're not traveling like we want to be. But we got things already on the books. And so as soon as this lets up, we're going to be hitting the road and telling the stories that God wants you guys to hear. I'm so encouraged every time I sit down with someone. I've been waiting for this interview for so long. I uh, wasn't sure when it was going to happen, and it just came together perfectly. So I really appreciate you and those kind words. Again, guys, make sure and subscribe. Hit the bell. That way you'll get notified next time we put out a video. Uh, stay tuned for all of our upcoming videos. Make sure if you have any prayer requests, put them in the comments below. I know that I'll get to them. Patrick himself will see them and get to pray over you guys. We'd love to hear some of the stories that you have uh, spending time with him and with Heather and all the ministry they've done. I'm sure they've touched your lives in dramatic ways. But until the next video, guys, keep praying, and we'll see you then. Ciao. Hasta salonga. <laughs>